Welcome back for a second episode of my avocado series reboot. It's day 93. There's a little weed growing at the edge. It's not going anywhere fast, so I can ignore it for the time being and pull it later. There are these little vestigial leaves, as I'm calling them, on the sides. They're all brown and withered, but at one point they looked like these two that you see above. They look like promising developing leaves, but they never become actual large size leaves just as this sixth one if you go up the stem and count is stunted and more ovular then you get this leaf which is uh, more of an adult uh, mature leaf that we're accustomed to expect and there are six big leaves in total they're all different sizes it's sort of reminiscent of my mango tree growing experience all the leaves are somewhat different sizes and even different shapes sometimes and the coloration varies although in this case it's not nearly as beautiful as the mango tree that's developing where the new sets of leaves have a red yellow green progression this is my first application of a midocloprid for this avocado seedling midocloprid is the most popular pesticide in the world the way it works is you dissolve it in water uh, feed the plant like this it gets absorbed through the root system and travels up through the vascular tissue of the plant until all the cells have this compound in them and if various kinds of pests try to feed on your plant then they'll get poisoned so it doesn't prevent the damage done by that initial feeding but it prevents colonization of your plant in the case of things like spider mites that are really nasty and can quickly overwhelm your plant with their fast reproductive and feeding capabilities so I decided to use this as an insurance policy essentially to protect my plant even though I don't really see signs of predation or infestation right now uh, based on the past experiences that I've had with trying to grow avocado a lot of them started having these little webbings uh, reminiscent of spider mite webbings um, in a stage far earlier than this so I think there is merit to the theory that if your root system is unhealthy then you will get infestations and your leaves will look sickly. So it's day 99. My seedling is about 14 inches tall or 35 centimeters. Uh, my index thumb span that I was just showing you that's about 20 centimeters or 8 inches. So it's a good way for me to estimate the height of my young plants and also the length of my foliage so the plant is doing well it has great turgor pressure all the leaves are roughly parallel to the ground which is a great sign so the coloration is excellent it looks healthier than it did before of course some of this darker color comes with maturation of the leaves but it's on a balcony. It doesn't get that much sun. It gets some morning sun, even at the most, maybe four and a half hours when it's close to the, the summer solstice. And that's not a lot at all compared to the wild. But in my very first series in 2016, I remember discussing this with some of my viewers and it's debatable as to how much sun this should get. Maybe it should be a shade plant when it's young. I don't know. I have never had access to full sun, so that would have been very interesting. Uh, someday I will. I'll make a point to see that it happens. But for now, I'm uh, in a lot of situations where it's just like balconies. So balconies are very problematic. You just don't get a full day's worth of sun so especially for something like my Joshua tree which grows in environments that are flat high valleys where the sun is uh, beating down on the plants for like I don't know maybe like 14 hours a day or something like that um, on my balcony there are limited options so I can only provide the best nutrition and water that I can and the best soil so that little weed is gone it's day 106 it's uh, one of these rare clips where I'm showing you one of my plants outside 
not just on my balcony or indoors. So the foliage is sort of a light green. And granted, some of this has to do with the lighting being different underneath uh, the sun of a cloudy day. But yeah, it's looking pretty healthy. Uh, leaves didn't break in the wind. And um, yeah, it's still just these six main leaves with um, this progression in size going up the stem. So um, yeah, that's pretty typical, I would say, of the development. It's day 120. I finally moved to a new place. I was in the old complex for slightly over 10 years. And I had been in many units there. But I'm really excited to be in a new place. This balcony is 50% bigger, but to my uh, chagrin, it does not receive direct sunlight in spring. Nevertheless, a heat wave in late April to mid-May accelerated growth for all of my plants, and you can clearly see that here. So by heat wave, I mean I live in San Diego, and typically it's a little chillier at this time of year, although it's still very warm compared to many other regions in North America. So by heat wave, I mean we had temperatures up to 80 Fahrenheit or so. Uh, for Celsius, you know, that's high 20s. Uh, not much beyond that, but I had to start using the air conditioning to cool my um, new place. I'm using a less concentrated fertilizer application this time. The small measuring scoop that came with my fertilizer is flawed. It's better to use the big scoop and of course it's better, it's more accurate to use a huge volume of water such as one big scoop per gallon instead of trying to divvy up a large scoop or use a small scoop to estimate for something like half a liter in a squirt bottle, something like that. So uh, the leaves are pretty dusty. Uh, I did a lot of cleaning. I did a lot of cleaning on this balcony. And I just want to wash away all the dust and the dirt. So after the recent heat wave induced growth spurt, the leaves are much bigger now. They still have an excellent amount of structure and turgor pressure. They're parallel to the ground. They're a much more handsome dark green than they were before. So things are really looking up. I'm really happy with the progress. I've never had an avocado seedling go this far. And it's basically all up to the soil mixture, which is a 75% sand, 25% clay soil mix. That's the most important thing. This plant has very high oxygen requirement for its roots. So uh, root breathability is number one in importance, I'd say. So it's day 127. My seedling is much taller now. It's about 18 inches or 45 centimeters tall. The leaves are looking a little bit weathered. They're much larger and a little bit more droopy now. I suppose that just comes with age. And no plant that I've ever grown, at least not outside on a balcony, that didn't have a few defects after a while versus um, that series where I grew a mango on a microfiber towel in a plastic container that uh, looked very pristine until at some point the root system just couldn't take it anymore and then just stalled out. So the new foliage is very shiny and waxy. It's kind of weird how as they get big they lose their sheen and waxiness and seem to not be as well protected. So here's a view of the outside of my balcony and it's mostly just a few pine trees here and there, uh, nothing that blocks the light, but there is an overhang for this balcony. So uh, not much light can get in even from an angle. So I've drilled uh, two holes at the bottom of each pot of these pots that I've made out of two waste baskets, two rubber made waste baskets. So now it gets complete drainage. On the first night, um, a lot of that water in the between the two trash cans drained out and it stank. So I knew that was fetid water accumulating. That was no good. Now that's not a problem anymore. So it's day 133. And as you can see, the second set of leaves is much bigger. 
they go through these odd day and night cycles. Um, I can't really predict it, but these new leaves, they are sometimes at a very acute angle pointing more than 45 degrees up. And other times, like now, they're just sort of uh, parallel or even droopy looking. So I don't really know why the plant does that, but it's just something that I've noticed Looking ahead, I hope my avocado seedling can maintain this toward pace of growth. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for further updates.